Number one, the word was eternal. Number two, it was primarily spoken, not written. So this emphasis on the original writings is misplaced. The emphasis should be on the original word that, was, that existed before the world even began. Now these spoken words were written down for us. I just wanted to show you in verse 15 here. Now even though I can't prove this point, so I can't prove that, you know, you know who can prove whether there are errors or not? But we can believe that they, there isn't errors because we can see what the will of God is through the writing of his, script, of, his, of his word. Look at verse 15. It says here, Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Now, the context there is Peter saying that he wants the people that he's writing to to, to, to have these things, to always have these things after he's gone. And I personally believe that this shows us the will of God, that God's will is for us to have his word even once it's preached and once the people that originally preached it have gone on to be with the Lord or whatever. And we can see this uh, in a couple of things. Let me show you here in Acts uh, 1, 15. Here's actually another verse that shows us that the Holy Ghost spake uh, by people. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. So we see there, the Holy Ghost, this is how the scripture came. It was spoken by the mouth of David, by the Holy Ghost. For he was numbered with us and attained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue a seldomer, that is to say the field of blood. And look at this, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric, which means you know, office, his bishopric let another take. So we see there that the Bible was spoken by the Holy Ghost, but he didn't leave us without witness because he made sure it was written down for us so that we would have it after it was spoken. Look here in Job 19, uh, verse 23. Job saying here, and I, I believe Job is prophetically ex proclaiming the desire of God. He says, Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. That they were engraven, that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. See, God's desire is that His word is uh, penned down. Deuteronomy uh, 31 24 says here, And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished. So after Moses delivered the word of God to the Israelites, he wrote them down in a book. And that's the desire of God. Look here at uh, Jeremiah uh, 30, verse 2, or even verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, so this is the word that came to Jeremiah, and it was saying, right? Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Uh, Revelation 21.5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So with those things in mind, we'll go to 2 Timothy 3. This is a pretty famous verse about the scripture. Uh, and and um, usually the verse people put up on their website on why they believe the Bible is the word of God. But it says here, all scripture, verse 16, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, a lot of people will take that verse because I think there's two ways you could read that verse. And a lot of people will say, when they want to try and emphasize the original writings, they say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And they say, well, scripture is something that's written. So what is inspired and given by God is the writings. It's the scripture is given by God. 
But you see, you could also read that verse and, and read it as, you know, all scripture, so the writings that we have, are given by what was inspired from God, by the inspiration of God, because we know that inspiration means to, to breathe out something. So is it saying that the writings are what are inspired by God? Which wouldn't even make sense, because if something's spoken, how can you inspire something by speech when it's written? Or is it saying, like what we've covered in the last couple of verses, that the word was given by inspiration of God, meaning that God spoke it through his prophets and spoke it through, um, through holy men of God as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that is where we get the written scripture. That is where, the, so the written scripture is the words that were spoken, written down for us. So are uh, only the original uh, writings inspired? Well, I believe it's actually the original word that was inspired. That was then preached, you know, and that was written down. And that is what we have today uh, with us. Um, let me show you a couple of other interesting things. Uh, Second Peter. Uh, it says here, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things... Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So he's referring to Paul's letters, saying that they're written down. But, but look at this verse 16. This is interesting. He says, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Isn't it interesting there, and I don't know if this is really, you know, don't, you don't have to take this as a huge point. I just think it's interesting that verse 16 says, as also in all his epistles speaking in them. It didn't say as in all in epistles writing in them of these things. To show that link there between the word being spoken and that spoken word being penned down, possibly. And you know what? I don't know if this is interesting to you as well, but uh, I don't know if you know that Paul didn't even actually write all his epistles. Uh, he, he spoke them, but look at, this is Romans 16 in the last chapter. It says, I, Tertius, who was an, a companion of Paul, I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. So a lot of people say, well, well, Paul wrote Romans. Paul didn't actually write it. He spoke it. The words were given to him by God, but it was actually Tertius that wrote down Romans. And the point there is, you know, it doesn't matter who writes down the word of God, who, who writes it, who writes it. It matters where it came from because it doesn't even matter who spoke it because we know that even unsaved people spoke the word of God in the Bible. You know, people that were false prophets, people that taught wrong things spoke the word of God and also holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it matters not who writes it down and who speaks it, just that we have that inspired word with us in a, in a, in a form that we can, we can read. So a lot of people will say, well, you know, well, men, you know, men corrupted the word then when they wrote it down. But, you know, we can believe that men can't corrupt the word when they speak it. Why should we believe that men can corrupt the word when it's written down? I mean, God, if God is powerful enough to, to make men speak it and create the universe, why can't he make sure that his word is written down accurately for us? So number one, it's impossible to even prove that. It'd be impossible to, to even prove uh, whether it was corrupted or not. Um, to just make that statement, uh, to, to any written testament, because that objection would apply to anything that is written down. Because if a Muslim is going to say, well, men wrote down the Bible, therefore they corrupted it, well, men wrote down the Quran. Men wrote down the Buddhist scriptures. Men wrote down, you know, men wrote down everything. I mean, God, you know, if you're going to take the position that there's some God out there, he's only communicated us either through men or through the Bible. So it's not really a hard position to take. But we can see from these scriptures that it's God's will. It's God's will for us to have his word written down. Um, and, you know, God is completely capable of doing it. So I don't see why it would be an inconsistent position to believe that we can have a perfect uh, written down version of God's word um, with us today. 